Please welcome our first innovator from our sister program at Oak Ridge, Innovation Crossroads, Justin Nesbaum, the CEO of Ascent Manufacturing, who will tell us about the heights to which 3D print printing has climbed. Hello everyone, my name is Justin Nussbaum and I'm the founder and CEO of Ascend Manufacturing where we design and build industrial 3D printers. So every day you interact with hundreds of plastic components and probably thousands that you don't even realize are there. The issue with this is that creating almost all of these components you need to use a technology called injection molding. Let's look at just one example part to go through this presentation. So this is a pretty universal part, could be used as a hose clamp, a wire clip, or a door latch. And let's say you want somewhere between a few thousand of these to a few million. Depending on the exact application and market that you sell it into, you'll sell these for about 60 cents to $10 a piece. Now, once you go out and you look at the technologies you can use to make this, you're going to find uh, injection molding is really the only technology that allows you to do this man uh, economically. Um, the problem with this is you're going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and many months in order to go to through the process of making that mold before you can even get to the manufacturing process itself. Now, Beck, one of the largest injection molding companies in the US, turns away about 20% of their customers because they're not able to get to that minimum order quantity for those parts to be created economically. Now, additive manufacturing or 3D printing can address this issue because they don't have to uh, make molds in order to produce parts. The problem with these technologies is, though, they're just way too slow today. So the way that they work is they form a fused material at a single point, which is then scanned back and forth over a surface to create a layer. Then you build up layers on top of each other to create the full 3D part. This is similar to if you wanted a picture, getting a piece of paper and a pencil and drawing it out by hand. It would be so much faster just to print that off on a printer, right? Well, that's the exact change that we're looking to make to the uh, manufacturing industry. So now let's look at the, the cycle time in order to manufacture one of these parts. So the technology that you see on the left-hand side, you can make one of these parts in about 16 minutes. Using laser sintering, it's much faster. You can do it in about 10 minutes. Now, if you go through the difficulty of making a mold, you can crank out one of these parts every six seconds. However, using our technology, our cycle time to create a part is just a half a second for one of these parts. Let's also look at how much you can sell these parts for then using these technologies. Fused deposition modeling, you can see you're about $20 uh, irrelevant of the quantity of parts. So it's mostly going to be used just for um, low volume production and prototyping mo mostly. Laser sintering, because it's so much faster, it's a lot cheaper, but it's still not at the price point where you can make a, a profit on these components. Now injection molding, obviously as you get into these very large quantities, you can do this more economically and that's when you can get down into the cents on the dollar. But you're going to have to be in the hundreds of thousands or more likely millions of components for this to make sense. Now our technology, we can crank out about 200,000 of these parts overnight with one of our printers, and we can make them for about each. So you're probably all wondering how we're actually doing that. Well, the way technology works is we use a projector actually very similar to the ones that we're using here today, except for a much higher intensity. So our projectors, if you project an image and you hold a piece of wood up in front of it, would burn a hole through that piece of wood in the shape of our image. Then we take that image and we project it onto a bed of plastic powder. Anywhere that, that image hits the bed, we form and fuse that entire layer together all at once. Also in this process, we have multiple cameras that are watching and controlling this process to verify that every single component is created by specifications. Then every part is also provided a quality analysis report for certification purposes so that you know that each of those components are safe for use. So looking at the market, we don't just want to sell into the 3D printing market, which is a $9 billion industry and growing at a rate of about 30%. We also want to sell into the uh, lower volume injection molding and higher volume machining industries, which together um, are about a $310 billion industry. Now we want to sell both machines, materials, and maintenance contracts into these industries, and that's estimated to be at least a $5 billion market um, addressable right when we get So a lot of the research and the development of this technology happened at the University of South Florida. About a half a million dollars of research went into that technology then, 
And now through Innovation Crossroads, we have another half a million dollars to help do some more application-specific research to, to gear this more from a lab-based prototype to a commercial product. So we've, we're just um, about to complete our pilot system. We're about a week away from doing that. And we have one more system to build before we get to that final production model in about two years. We're looking to raise about two and a half million dollars today in order to get to there. But in the meantime, we can start generating some revenue from uh, application-specific research and some production services with our um, next model. So we have a very high caliber team of expertise uh, assisting in taking this technology to market. Uh, there's myself and also the previous Global Chief Creative Officer of Ford, an Emmy Award winner, but also experts in hardware design, machine design, and industrial controls. We also have a material development specialist that's helping us, um, helping us optimize printing parameters so that we can verify that every part created is of the highest quality. Thank you for your time. I'll be speaking with you after these presentations. Thanks, Justin.